Radio One Station, where information is power. The following is a paid program. The views and opinions expressed are those of the program sponsor and do not necessarily reflect the views and opinions of 1010 WOLB and its management. Shop Talk with Cassandra Renee, the radio show where we talk about it all. Hey, welcome to Shop Talk with Cassandra Renee. With me are my co-hosts, Kevin Eaton. Good morning, everyone. Angelo Superstar, Barbara Richardson. Good morning. We have Dr. Lisa. Good morning, Baltimore. Hey, how's everybody doing? Good. Great, great. Um, great good. weekend, Wonderful. y'all? Yes, great indeed. weekend? Yes, indeed. Weekend. Wonderful yes. weekend. Oh, good. Good, Kevin. I'm going to start with yours. Well, you know me. I did the usual. I did my church uh, plan in the, in the church, but I, you know, I started a new church this, this weekend. Absolutely. Yeah, and you know, it was a wonderful experience, a wonderful service, you know, so I, I enjoyed that. Awesome. You know? And also, you know, my play rehearsal, you know, so I'm actually in a play where That's I'm, right. That's I'm right. playing an organist in a church, so... <laughs> 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 You know, so yeah, okay, but that's good. That makes it a lot easier, yeah, doesn't so, it? Yeah, so I learned my lines and I'm getting better. So, you know, acting is something that's like, you know, I just give people hats off to. You got to remember lines and stuff, you know, mm-hmm. in front of all those people. Yeah. You know, because it's a nice big auditorium. Yeah. I can play in front of them, but actually speaking and acting. Mm-hmm. It's harder than people think. Yeah, yes. acting, it looks like yes. it's easy. You yes. just get up there and just start yes. talking, but yes. I guess it isn't as easy as mm-hmm. it looks. I don't mm-hmm. know. I've True. never acted before. And I don't have a lot of lines. Just, mm-hmm. you know, but just, mm-hmm. just remember them when it's time to spit them out. Right. With all those seats. And, and being know. in the right position, too. You know, <laughs> where you're supposed that. to stand. Not, and right. Turning 16, your back to the audience. 18, 20 mm-hmm. hours. Keep on redoing the right. whole thing. Right. Over and over. over. <laughs> energy. Mm-hmm. Well, yeah. Dr. Lisa, you sound like you're experienced. But that's I right. Am. She was. She was a, a part of, what, what was it? House of Cards? House of Cards and Veep. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yes. okay. Yeah, mm-hmm. she can catch me on a couple of episodes. Um, season two and three. Okay. Mm-hmm. So yeah, just watching that whole conundrum just go on. Mm-hmm. You know, people in the right place, the right lighting, the staff, the makeup. Um, just twenty hours a day right. doing the same lines in the same position just to get a two or three second shot. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, it's really hard. Mm-hmm. It really mm-hmm. is hard. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mentally, emotionally, mm-hmm. and physically, mm-hmm. it can be draining. So hats off to act. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I say that mm-hmm. too. Mm-hmm. Angelo, how you doing? I'm good. I had a good weekend. I the resurgence was resurgence. Resurgence of Party Boy G Lo came <gasps> out on Saturday. Wait a minute, say that again. The resurgence of Party, Party Boy G Lo. I love it. That's my alter ego. <laughs> yeah, I love it. Yes. <laughs> so my cousin my cousin Gerard turned twenty seven. Yes. So he had a party and it was fabulous. Yes. Somebody, may, whoever made that seafood salad, I'll be stalking you for like the next six months. <laughs> oh, it was good? Yes. It had to be amazing oh, for you to god. love it. Yes. Oh my god, it was so good. Oh my goodness. Anytime a chef says something is good, yes. it's oh my god. good. Yes. Oh. Oh, he has chills, I've, never, I've yes. never seen you do that before. Yes. Oh, he's, <laughs> that hey, great. he's excited. Yeah. <laughs> On the air, we have Jimmy. Good morning. How y'all doing? Good, good morning, How are Jimmy. you? I'm I'm doing good. Did you have Excellent. a good you have a good weekend? Actually, it was a pretty quiet weekend. I've learned I got to find something to do now with my Sunday afternoons with no football coming on. You know what, <laughs> Jimmy? It's so interesting you should say that. I wandered around yesterday like a zombie. <laughs> I did not know what to do with myself. No, that's, exa- that's exactly what I was doing. I just walked outside, walked around, <laughs> came back, and I was like, <laughs> "Yeah, I need a life." <laughs> you know, and you tend to eat more too. I'm like, mm. I don't know what to do with myself. Maybe I'll eat. <laughs> yeah, that 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 is so true. Uh-huh. <laughs> Well, you know what? It's so good to be talking to you today, and it's so good to be here with all my co-hosts. I kind of surprised them today. I told them that they will be leading the conversation today. So our main topics today, um, because of a caller that we had last week, we were talking about the girls and self-esteem, and he wanted to talk about boys and self-esteem. So, gentlemen, I can't recall your name, but we're going to be talking about boys and self-esteem today. And our second topic is going to be sugar mamas and papas, Mm. y'all. Sugar Mamas mm. and 
Papas. So if you'd like to join in on the conversation, feel free to dial the number 410-481-1010 or 1-877-704-1010. So, but I want to start off talking about what we talked about last week. And what we talked about last week was, you know, girl self-esteem and should we be teaching our daughters that they don't need a man, y'all? Hmm. Yeah, I remember that. Kevin. Yeah, my answer was, I think that they should be taught that the man does have his proper place in their life. Yes. You know, and when you have the, the right chemistry of the, the man and the woman together, you know, you have a better family situation yeah. and that, that keeps your stability. And, you know, that's, that's where it all starts at, right there in the, in the family between the male and the female. And, and if, if they're taught correctly, then they will do correctly in life. And, you know, unfortunately, I feel like they don't get enough for that. Yes. You know, and, you right. know, that's how I feel about that. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, you feel strongly about that thing, huh? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Okay, what about you, Dr. Lisa? Because you weren't here last week, correct? I was not uh, yes. here, but I love the topic. Yes. Um, just thinking about um, uh, me coming into my own, that self-esteem was really important mm -hmm. because it was connected to my identity. And so um, peer pressure, a lot of things going on, um, and, and y y you've got to find your own. Yes. And it's difficult when things are coming at you, the media, all sorts of other images. I mean, the whole Barbie doll thing just still oh, disturbs yes. me. Oh, yeah. You know, that one look. Yes. Um, that one style, that one weight size, mm. all of that is really special. But once you get over that hump and get into your own authentic self, yes. it's liberating. Yes, And that's what we need to teach our young girls, mm -hmm. to see that liberation and to bring balance. Not that you don't need a man, but if you don't have one, you still will survive. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. You know, and unfortunately, a lot of us don't feel that liberation that you speak about until yeah. we're in our 40s and 50s. Yes. Right. You know, and that's something that should take place much earlier than that. It does. And, and some of it does come with time and wisdom. Yes. You know, because youth and folly all go together and errors. Um, but I think that, you know, putting them on the pathway. Yes. And making an attainable goal is what we should be doing. And people along the way to help them. Absolutely. Not destroy them. Mm. Um, you know, I think that's our responsibility as older women. And I'm saying older because I just hit 50. Mm. Woo! -hoo! Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Watch out, world. And, you know, I feel the need to help the young girls that I see and to talk to them uh, about choices and consequences um you know and life yeah nobody talks about that people talk about fashion they talk about hair mm -hmm. which is okay in moderation but self mm -hmm. is very important mm -hmm. you know it's just so interesting you should bring up that you've you know turned 50 congratulations yes mm -hmm. you know and that you want to reach back and you want to help because you think about it when we were coming along we didn't have that too much we depended on our parents right. we depended on our school teachers you mm -hmm. know because they were certainly role models mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. but we didn't have all the resources back then that we have now mm -hmm. and we weren't aware our parents weren't aware of the things that we're aware of now because a lot of things our parents did may have been a little damaging because it's not because they weren't intentionally trying to damage us they just right. didn't know any better right. yeah we came from a, a different culture yes you know we are certainly in another different time um, where some of those traditional uh, things that our parents raises up is a little different yes. and I believe when you know better you should do better you should do absolutely better. you know but we cannot fault them no. for what they knew because yeah. they did the best that they could with right. what they had with what right. they had because you think about us raising our children I think about it now with all my children being adults I made mistakes oh yeah you know I look back now because like you said with age comes wisdom yeah. right. and I look back and I'm thinking that wasn't such a good idea right you know but <laughs> I did the best I could with what I had and they don't hold that against me because yes. they said mom we could see you were trying at least right. you were trying mm -hmm. yes you know what hurts is parents who don't even try won't try yes yeah let's bring Byron in real quick. Hi, Byron. Welcome to the show. Hey, good morning, good people. Good morning. Good morning Byron. I got a quiz question to ask y'all. What's the best place for a young person to find a, a decent meat? Only one question. The very best place. For them to find what? I'm sorry? A decent mate. A decent? Survey done. A decent mate. Yeah. Okay, what age range are we talking about? Just, just young people, like, uh, 
after school, like college. I already said it. I mean, I already gave out the clue. That was my, that was, that was, uh, matter of fact, that was going to be my answer. My answer was going to be college. College. Yeah. Right. yeah, that was going to be my answer, too, at college. Yep. Yeah, I gave it up. <laughs> For a young person, because you can figure, you get to be on campus with a person, you get to know a person. And I'm thinking, my nephew met his wife at college, and they got a couple of kids, own a house out of Hartford County. They're doing real good. Awesome. Mm-hmm. And they've been together for maybe uh, 15 years. And they went to the University of Maryland Eastern Shore. And I said, you know, that's good. I tell a lot of kids, you know, don't learn the difference between sex and love. Mm-hmm. It's different things. Absolutely. And, and a lot of us get caught up on thinking sex is love. You can have sex without loving a person, but when you got them both together, you got a winning combination. Mm, okay. Well, and thank. Another thing I like oh. to say is I always tell young people: try to uh, be independent, live on your own. Even if you if you fail, you know we all been up, down, all around. Try to know what it is to take care of yourself by yourself. Even if you fail, at least you try because you never know. You can have the best mate in the world. You know they could die. Or anything could happen. You and you you want to be by yourself. You know, a lot of us don't know how to take care of ourselves by ourselves. We always come from mama house to girlfriend house or, or whatever, moving in with friends, you know, and we never spurt being by ourselves because we never had that period. Yes, yes. And I try to tell young people, and I, I tell people, young people in Baltimore all the time, if you can't go away to school because you get to meet different people from different parts of the country with different mentalities and everything. Yeah, the different Baltimore backgrounds. is not the world. Right. You know, and you got to get out there and you got to mingle with people. You got to make connections. And it makes you a more rounded person. <clears throat> yep, more balance. Thank well, you so much. Little, um, tidbit for the day and y'all have a good one. Thank you for your <laughs> Thank tidbit. You. <laughs> you know, Byron brought up something really good, good, interesting. He says, you know, a lot of times people think sex is love. And it isn't. And unfortunately, you find people like we were talking about with low self-esteem. You know, they go out there and they have sex with multiple people because to them, that's love. Excellent. You know, so self-esteem is very, very important for our young ladies and for our young men. So we're going to be talking about self-esteem um, in terms of young men as well. And speaking of which, uh, I'm going to bring Helene in. Hi, Helene. Welcome to the show. Hey, good morning. How you doing? Good morning. Good morning. All right. So uh, last week, I, uh, I raised the issue. And I didn't raise it uh, to create conflict, but more because, um, in my opinion, the, uh, the issues of, of men, of boys, self-esteem is virtually neglected, especially in the African-American community. Uh, and I think that the reason why we neglect it is because we think that we're living in a patriarchal system and therefore... Um, boys and men, uh, we, we're all right. But what we don't realize is that in the African-American tradition, um, our cultural reality isn't the same as the dominant culture. And the African-American male has a whole lot of self-esteem issues. If you uh, go to an average classroom, elementary school, the boys, you'll find them acquiescing to the girls. And uh, the educational levels are considerably lower than the girls, for the most part. Now, um, one of the callers called up after me, and he talked about I after the boy and the girl, why I'm so for the boy. You know, it, it's nothing like that. Mm-hmm. I have um, my, my daughter. Now, uh, adopted children, foster children, most of the time they suffer from self-esteem. Mm-hmm. All right. Now, my daughter's self-esteem issues were apparent. You, could, you, 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 you know, you just look at it and see it. Whereas my son, he suffers in silence. And if, if, you, if you didn't have an eye for it, you wouldn't even recognize it. Yeah. So the point that I'm saying is, say, men cry in the dark. Um, we suffer in silence because it's not... Uh, manly, according to our definition, to complain or to um, acknowledge uh, hurt, uh, disappointments, and all that, all, all the other things. So we tend to just go neglect. It. And I think it's a critical area because uh, the person who ends up getting hurt by the hurt man is the woman. Mm-hmm. So, if, 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 if from our cultural standpoint, if we don't address 
uh, both, the male and the female. We put all this focus and attention on the female self-esteem, and we neglect the male self-esteem. You know, uh, we're going to suffer as a people. That's, that's just my take. Okay. Well, thank you for your call, Halim, and thank you for the topic uh, for today. Mm-hmm. All right. Have a great day. <coughs> Me. Okay, we're going to bring Frederick in. Hi, Frederick. Welcome to the show. Hello. How are you? Wonderful people. Hello. Good morning, Good morning, Frederick. Y'all got the table stirring the soup now, ain't you? <laughs> we like you know how we do soup. it on the Shop Talk with Cassandra Renee show. Uh-huh. I say, you know how we do it on the Shop Talk with Cassandra Renee show. Go. Y'all be cooking the stew. <laughs> yeah, I think that we need to teach our kids that. Somebody was speaking earlier about that, that our, our sexual behavior. Mm-hmm. We need to teach our kids, one, that sex is not a sport. Okay. I mean, we have our kids thinking that this is some type of recreation. Mm-hmm. It's, you know, but if you take the simple way I taught, taught my grandkids is, I say, if you take two animals, and you put them in a, in a cage or put them in your backyard and you watch them, a male and a female. <clears throat> They're not pouncing up and down with each other four or five times a week, year-round. The only time they go to these motions is when she's in heat. Is that correct? Okay. So we're teaching our kids that sex is some type of thing that's connected to love. Sex is not connected to love at all. Mm-hmm. So, uh, uh, the sexual action is just put in place for the reproduction of, of kids, mm-hmm. not for thrill-seeking. You follow what I'm saying? Y- yes, sir. And we've allowed the media and this, you know, this way of life, this thing, you know, everything goes. And, and our kids, you know, we wonder why our kids are having kids and what they're going to do with them. Well, you got to realize one thing. Poor people is an industry in America. Right. They're not going to fix the problem. They're going to do whatever they can to keep the problem going on and on and on. And the sad thing is that we blacks are the majority of the victims of the scheme, and we don't see it. Mm. And they use us. And every, ever since we've been in this, in, in this country, they've built their society and their... And their Imagine if, imagine if all the jails were closed. No blacks were in jail. All the jails were closed. How many, how many white people would be out of work? <laughs> okay. Yeah. Well, well, Y'all thank have you. a good one. It's always a pleasure. Same here. Love Bye-bye. you, people. Love you, too, Fred. <laughs> Y'all have a good one. <laughs> Bye-bye. I never looked at it as being a thrill seeker, though. You know, but, you know, I want to talk about a little bit about what Haleem said. Men yes. cry in the dark. You know, there's a book entitled uh, that. I've heard, yeah. Oh, is that Michael Basin? Um, but... That is so true, mm-hmm. you know, and men, boys are taught, you know, you have to be a man. You can't complain. You can't whine. You can't, you know, so that's, that's, a, that's a very good point, it you is. know, and mm-hmm. boy, men's self-esteem is very important to have that intact because it will ultimately affect women and ultimately affect the entire family. Yes. Yeah, I yes. think it affects me more for like in my family, if one of the girls cries, it's kind of expected Yes. because it's always been that way. But. Like if one of the boys cry, it I am I'm immediately like grabbing tissue or something like don't don't do that right like because then if you get me to do it then I'm gonna feel some type of way yeah but I mean men cry that's just something we do but you know they're taught to hold it in don't right. show it exactly that isn't very healthy right. no it's not it really isn't and I think um, building. Uh, self-esteem um, for for both, mm-hmm. um, but especially our our young boys, is to teach them um, emotional vocabulary, how to express right. themselves, you know, without taking away the uh, masculinity, mm-hmm. and for women too, and young girls, how to express yourself, because these are human emotions. emotions. Right. Yes, yes, it's natural. You know, and your gender does not set the standard for how you uh, express that emotion. If something mm-hmm. terrible happens, you cry. Yes. Right. You yes. cry. You need that release. You yeah, really I've, do. I've seen mostly, I would see the males cry at like a funeral or yes. something like that. But I have I had gotten so, so, I wouldn't even cry at a funeral. I yes. would just sit there because it's just not something we were taught to do. 
Mm. Like you always hear the term man up. Yes. Or you're not going to be no punk or you, you my son ain't going to be a sissy. Or, All those you know, negative so terms. Yeah. When it comes to stuff like that, like, like I can go to a funeral and not cry. But now say if I get alone and I think about that person, maybe months later, I might just cry out of nowhere. But mm-hmm. there's nobody around. Men cry in the dark. Jimmy. Um, one thing, one thing that she said that was that was very true. Men are forced to suppress suppress mm-hmm. their feelings. Even even when you have self esteem issues, a lot of times a man would not show that he has uh, low self esteem. So in, in turn, you usually see it in his sexual activities and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. So they're constantly trying to validate that I'm a man. This is what men do. Absolutely. You know, and then they get into relate. Well, I'm not even, even going to call it relationships, but, you know, they actually accumulate multiple women, Seeking you know, to kind of fill that void. You know, Seeking it's like, I'm thrill. exactly. I'm the man now. I have, right. you know, five, six different women that I'm juggling. Right. Yeah. Because, of, you know, what I'm feeling is like, you know, all this activity and the way we're acting is just input into us you know what i'm saying we're just acting the way we were reacting because of our history you know what i'm saying you know they'll give us uh a whole month of black history month absolutely jimmy are we jimmy we getting feedback i don't know that must be you you know, we get a whole I month. Think, you know what I'm saying? Okay. What else do we? What else do we celebrate a whole month? You mm-hmm, know. Mm-hmm. So a lot of a lot of uh, issues that we have, you know, let's let's just bring it out in 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 in, in the light. Is it yes. really because of our, our history? It's because it's been set up like that in this country, you know, and and we're just seeing the results of it. Absolutely. Right. You know. So and. Like we say, like, we don't need to condemn the older people, the, you know, the older generation for not teaching us what we were going to have to endure through these times. Because yeah. we are seeing some things that we never thought we'd have to deal with, you know, like factories that, that, are, that are just empty buildings. No and nobody's more. working and stuff like that, you know. Yes. So we can't condemn them. Also, I feel like we can't condemn our young people either for being in the way they are either okay you know and especially our our girls like our our top is is the girls with the self-esteem and if you look at girls self-esteem right now to me the ones that have the self-esteem the, the self-esteem isn't really girlish you know it's more oh. it's more more it's, masculine yes yes okay. the ones that, that that have the esteem are the ones who are not really the girlish type when the one i see for the for the young people so that's why I say the girls really need to be guided, you know, as to, you know, to how to keep the the femininity, pop, the femininity right, which make the population over and over and over because women come on doc sometimes we agree to sometimes we don't you know but i'm not even looking at you you know what i'm not even looking at him let's bring brother brother carlos and hi brother set up like that let's not slip on the banana peel that they put there for us you know (laughs) brother carlos welcome to the show good morning everybody good Good morning morning. i think i agree with uh, everything that's being said a, a, a little bit of everything um, and I think I agree with Dr. Lisa the most because it's amazing. I would not want to raise my kids in today's atmosphere. And the reason why is that the impact of peer pressure, social media, uh, the reality shows, and, and all the things that are um, that, that are like the bottom of our society. And young people tend to gravitate towards that bottom of our society. So I, my particular uh, uh, answer would be that we have to somehow find a way to keep them in balance, away from that bottom of society. Mm-hmm. And with, with uh, the case, and I'll make this kind of short, is that with the, with the young, with young children or young babies raising babies, single parent holes, single parent parent, parent holes, and so forth, and, and, and what, the, what they see out there, uh, we 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 have to uh, as 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 elders or as a mature adult, we have to pitch in and help those young kids to to find guidance guidance and balance in their lives. And I think what we need to do is to show them examples of people uh, in our in our history, such as uh, you know uh, uh, Harriet Tubman. 
Yeah, yeah, <laughs> Harriet Tubman or, on, Fred, right? or Frederick Douglass or, mm-hmm. for example, for example, there was a very interesting article about the life of Al Sharpton uh, in the uh, Washington Post last Sunday. Right. And it shows all of his trials and tribulations in coming up. But, you know, and so when kids have something to reach up to yes. that's higher than the lowest component, then, then they, can, they can climb the ladder rather than climbing down to the gutter, you see, and so forth. So, that's, and so that builds esteem. So the women have to help the young girls to understand what life is all about, yes. and say that the sex thing is not love, and, and, and that you are worthy within your own self and your own being. And so is the case with the young men. Uh, that shows that just because you are making babies uh, or having sex with an individual doesn't make you a man, uh, but it's how you build that house that makes you a man and protects your family. So these are all components which is very complicated to deal with, but uh, I think you guys are doing a great job because you're trying to find an answer and give us some input and some insight and to how to solve the problem. I appreciate that. Thank you. We appreciate you, Brother Carlos. Have a great day. Awesome. Mm-hmm. 410-481-1010 or 1-877-704-1010. Let's bring Steve in. Hi, Steve. Welcome to the show. Hey, good morning. I got a perfect story for you because this is a true story. I was 25 years old, living in a neighborhood. A couple blocks to the right of me was real bad guys and a couple blocks to the left of me was real bad guy. So I was going with a, a young lady in that neighborhood. She happened to have a baby. Uh, subsequently to that, we broke up. So the guys in my neighborhood were seeing this guy coming to her house and they called me up and said, do you want us to smoke him? We see this guy going around your old lady's house. Mm. And the reason I said no is because of this. At 25 years old, I had enough self-esteem and enough self-confidence and enough maturity to say, well, she didn't put, he didn't put no gun to her head and force his way in the house. Mm-hmm. So I told them no. And nothing happened as a consequence of it. This guy could have been killed because the guy that actually called me up on the phone, this guy does not play. And the guys that are with, were with him, they don't play as well. So that's a perfect example of if a 25-year-old guy today and in his neighborhood gave, went through the same thing I went through, man, you know what would have happened. Mm. Wow. What the guy was talking about the young girls. What I don't like about young girls, it's the same with them. It's like um, the same hair, the same phone, same everything. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So you're saying they should be more unique? Feel free to Come be. On mm-hmm. They, Who they, they all know, know individuality. Right. Yeah. All right. Okay. Well, thank you for your call, Steve. All right. Thank you. What do they bring to the table? Right. <laughs> okay. We're going to bring Daryl in. <laughs> Hi, Daryl. Welcome to the show. Yes. Good morning. I think our first problem is we need to define the word man. I think Al Grace said more than anybody, I don't need a man. Yes, you need a man. The problem is, is all you have is a male. We need to define the definition of the word man, and we need to follow that example of a true man. Mm-hmm. And maybe our problems will, will cease. We have to take the test and get a license for everything else, but we don't have to take the test to be a man. Our definitions in my, in my day was as many women as you could get, that's what made you more of a man. And that was definitely wrong. Mm-hmm. A man is responsible and will take care of one woman as opposed to having many women. Mm-hmm. So I think we need to go back to the drawing board and define what the definition of a man and a woman is because our people do not have that example to follow. Thank you. Okay. Thank you so much for your call. Jimmy, how long do we have with you? About two minutes. <laughs> two minutes. Okay. Yeah. Comments? Oh, okay. Yeah. One thing, one thing I wanted to say that everything, I feel that everything is taught in the home. And first of all, a lot about, say, the boys and girls are not taught to be partners. Mm-hmm. You know, they pretty much say, okay, this is what you do, but they're not taught that, you know, they're supposed to be a woman in your life. They're supposed to be a life partner. You know, that's what you should be, you should be striving to do. And that's, that's, that's some of the things that's not taught. At the same time, when it comes down to self-esteem, 
one thing that I've learned in being a father of girls is very, very important for the man, the man that's in their life as they're growing up to tell them how beautiful they are. Absolutely. That way, that way they're not seeking it from someone else. Absolutely. I agree with you 100 yeah. percent because they're out searching. You know what I mean? If they don't get it in yeah. the household, then they're going to search it out for it outside the household. And not everybody has the best intentions. Yeah, true, true. And another thing that I have learned, I, even in relationships, you find that women that you date that have, say, a, a, a father and a mother in the household, you, you find them more balanced. Because mm -hmm. they, they basically come into a relationship with you with the understanding about the partnership. Yeah. And definitely a higher self-esteem. Yes, definitely. Yeah. I, I agree with you there, Jimmy. Well, thank you so much. All righty. Okay, so Bye, I guess you, everyone. And you'll be All talking right, Jimmy. to Jimmy. Yeah. Jimmy. Okay. You'll be talking yeah. to us next week about the mamas and the papas, right? <laughs> yeah, I will. Because we're going to be going into that in a minute. <laughs> Have a great day. Okay, bye-bye. All right, bye-bye. All right. Bye -bye. All right. <laughs> Dr. Lisa. Well, I... I uh, something that uh, Kevin said made me think, you know, if we want our young girls and young guys to succeed and have self-confidence that's healthy and, and strive for uniqueness and individuality, then we have to create an environment for that, for that to happen, to foster that. But right now, everybody's in survival mode. And when you're in survival mode, what you put on is a front. Yes. And that front may not be the real you, but you put it out there mm -hmm. because you're just trying to survive. So yes. I think, you know, with all the pieces in place, we have to create an environment where we can teach our young people. Because mm -hmm. right now, if I was to teach um, a young girl um, how to become a woman, the, the system and the society that we were in, I'd be geared to more survival tactics mm -hmm. than agree. anything. Yes. Okay. You yes. know, and you, you have to survive. And so that what you said, Kevin, takes away some of the femininity out of women mm -hmm. because they're just trying to survive. Mm -hmm. right. And right. so I think it, it it's that piece that we have to work on, too. If we're going to work on the self-esteem issue. We have to work on the environment issue. Right. You know, wow. And also, uh, Jimmy made a, a very valid point, too, is that they need to be taught that, the you know, the man and the woman have to be partners. Mm -hmm. You know, they are a team. You know what I'm saying? They're there. I look at it like you're pulling a wagon. Yeah. Right. You know, so you got a wagon. You're going up the hill. So either both of you guys are pulling the wagon and throwing your load in there, you're pulling together, or one person's pulling the wagon, so you're not getting up there as fast. Mm -hmm. You know, the other person's sitting in the wagon, you know. Yeah, extra you know, load. That's I was in a relationship. Weight, I looked at like she Jack was in the and back. Jill. Yeah, Went you know, up the hill. You know, <laughs> right. so I, I, I felt like I was in a relationship where, you know, my mate was in the, ma in the wagon with her feet dragging out the back. <laughs> Oh you my know, <laughs> Like I, I'm never gonna make it to the top. Like she, you know she, she caused a whole lot of traction. And the whole <laughs> object of both of you guys being partners, right, with your wagon to get to the top of the hill, is so that when you both get up to the top of the hill, y'all can get in your wagon and, and roll together, right? on down. She thought she was I mean? a sugar dad. Oh right. my god! <laughs> but you know what? You know what I find though. Even people who go into relationships with their self esteem intact. If they're in a bad relationship yes. and they're involved with someone who emotionally and psychologically abuses them, yes. even if it's subtle, right. after a while, it kind of eats away at that self-esteem. So, yes, we need to work with our young ladies in terms of their self-esteem, but we also need to carry it into adulthood as well. Yes. Because we as d adults being grown and way grown, we still have self-esteem issues. And, it's, right. and, it's, and it comes from our relationships a lot of the time. Your childhood. Yes. Yes. Yeah, your childhood but and your present relationship. Our whole conversation reminds me of a music video from Vivian Green called Gotta Leave. Yeah. This whole, you remember that video? The yes. whole time she's singing and he's on the phone talking to his homeboy and he doesn't even see that she's packing up everything in the house and leaving. Yes. And until he's finished on the phone that he realizes the whole house is empty. Yes. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know what I mean? That's a that's a lesson in that. Right, because, it was a lesson in that. Because a lot of times people take you for granted. Exactly. You know, because mm -hmm. and they don't even notice that you're unhappy. Like and he, notice that yeah, you are emotionally exactly. detached. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. Good point. He was all in the refrigerator, and she was just all packing. The next thing you know, when he finishes his talking, it's like he looks around like, 
empty house. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. That's a lesson for everybody, y'all. Mm-hmm. Yes. You're listening to Shop Talk with Cassandra Renee. We air every Monday from 10 a.m. to 11 a.m. If you'd like to join in in the conversation, please give us a call 410 481 1010 or 1 877 704 1010. Are we ready to go into the mamas and the papas, y'all? Uh, bring it on. Are we ready? Do we want to talk about, <laughs> about this a little while longer? Well, Hey, bring it on. Bring on the mamas Come on, co-host, y'all. Yeah, y'all leave it. You ready, mamas and papas? And papas? Okay, yeah, we ready for... I think it, it is attached to self-esteem it is. issues. <laughs> you know, it's all related. It's all related. <laughs> okay. So we can flow. Yeah. You know, because a little bit of what we were talking about um, last week, we were talking about, because actually, to be honest with our listeners... We ran out of stuff to talk about last week. <laughs> so it ended up being an open mic. Right. And so we ended up talking about, you know, we're finding now that a lot more men are seeking older women to take care of them, to supplement right. their income, to buy them things, take them places, do things for them. They're actually seeking older women out because you're finding, well, you're finding anyway that a lot of women are college educated. And by the time they get to a certain age, they're making six figures easy you know so these men see this that these women are financially stable and they want a piece of that you know so you know that goes with the sugar mamas but there have been traditionally sugar papas out there too so we want to talk about this today we want to talk about it more in depth let's talk about sugar mamas and sugar papas kevin all right well uh i think that's personally in this situation that you have to realize that the younger person later on is going to have a, a life you know, saying they're going to be, they're going to be have a life. So the older person who is probably how 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 old is this is this Papa? Twenty years, thirty 20, years? Who 20, knows? You know, they usually eventually, about twenty years older. Yeah, yeah. I mean, eventually they're they, it's not they're going to be out of the race as far as I look at it. So if they're in a situation and they're trying to ready this person for the world or something like that, mm-hmm. you know. And this person might be, like, the younger person might be somebody who really have, like, no other way to turn to or something like that. Okay. It may be a way where it could be some sort of a, a experience, a life experience, where it would be a part of this this young person's upbringing. Okay. As long as this older person realizes that this young person is going to grow up and is going to have to have their own adult life. Okay. You know what I'm saying? So... Maybe the sugar mamas and the papas may work for the young people, but it's not like I'm not talking. I'm talking about like teenagers and like that. You know, we're talking about like early twenties, right? Okay, right. we're talking about somebody like might be in college or something like that. Okay, or older, and they like somebody that's a little older, maybe a CEO or executive, something like that. Right, like I'm in their forties, like a twenty-five right. to you know, forty right. ratio. Right. Mm-hmm. So I just think that they both need to take into consideration. That that time is going to come where they're going to be. They both are going to be older. One is young and one is old. Right. After a while, one is going to be old and one is going to be older. Right, right, right. right. You know what I'm saying? Right. And after a while, that no one will be older and no one will be old dirt. Yeah, old dirt. Right. Yes. right. You know what I'm saying? So, <laughs> yes. you know what I'm saying? Yes. Right? Yes. So, by the time the younger person gets to a certain point in their life, it should be expected for them to, to look someplace else for somebody either their age or maybe even younger than them. Than them. Oh, just go so ahead and complete they, that they cycle. complete the circle. Yeah, you are, they, you are, yeah, you are breeding. Feel, so that's what <clears throat> I feel about that. And I think that, you know, as long as they're adults, like mm-hmm. I said, like they're adults, and it is not a situation where the younger one is being abused. Right. Right. You know, you do, I, don't, I don't agree with no type of abuse on people. You know, at all, you know, you know, at all, period, you yes. know, but in, in life, this younger person, this this sugar mama may save this younger male from death. You know what I'm saying? If he if he if he had another direction and took the other direct direction. He may wind up dead in today's society. You know society. what? That's a very good See point because you find that so, a lot of times to, because a lot of times the males they're looking for mamas. So to a, you right. know someone to, to, to a, guide them. So to attach himself yes to a uh, uh, a mama right who he knows is going to be and take care of him. He really accepts her and knows that as long as he's doing the right thing and he's taking care of her the right way that he's taking care of right. 
that might work for him because his only option may be death. We don't know. Right. You know, so I, I depend on the situation. You know, no long, like I say, long as not nobody being abused or right. anything like that, you know. You know, because you, you mentioned that, you know, there's like maybe a 20 some year old person maybe dating a CEO of a company who's 40 something. And then eventually, of course, with that person getting older, then the other person getting old, would you yeah. say old dirt? Old, you know, yeah. but one thing we need to keep in mind though, people are taking care of themselves now. I mean, mm-hmm. there are older people who are in better shape. There are people who I know are in their 50s, and they are in better shape than people I know in their 20s. Look at you. Hey. Hey. Nah, you tell you me know? what to tell your age. So, but, but, but they're taking care of them. But they're taking care of themselves. You know, right. but they are in better shape. I mean, have you seen the picture like on Facebook that's circulating? Jada Pinkett Smith's mom? Uh-huh. She looks amazing. Pharrell's and she's 60-some. You know what you I mean? You can't tell Pharrell and his father apart. Well, and that's the genes. Yeah. It's the genes. Because he's still like, he's still in vampires. high school. Mm-hmm. I think they're vampires, <laughs> too. Vampires. How about you know? that lady that, so, I think she's like 75 years old and she's a bodybuilder. Uh-huh. She I lives here. Too. She's here in I've Maryland. Really? You know, so you can't say <laughs> that that's, amazing. you can't yes. say that that's the case. I mean, because we're taking good we care of ourselves. We have a lady in the plate that's like 70-some years old. Yeah. Looks 40, 40. You wouldn't know. You wouldn't know. But let's, Dr. Lisa. Well, I think it's um, <laughs> it, it, it's another situation for me. It's um consensual arrangement. Oh. Right. You know, there are benefits right. for both parties. Because if you're going to have sugar moms and sugar daddies, you have to talk about the sugar babies. Oh, right. yeah. And so, you know, this, this consensual arrangement benefits both. And when it no longer is beneficial, they part and they go on. And uh, this is uh, relationships without strings attached. Mm-hmm. Borderlining legal prostitution. Oh, right. no, she didn't. <laughs> On that note, let's bring Adrian in. Hi, Adrian. Welcome to the show. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, again, my name is Adrian Muldrow, and I, I'm a pray first uh, uh, before I say anything. <laughs> uh oh. <laughs> Every Sunday. So I want to salute my pastor, Jamal Brown, okay. without a doubt. Yes. You know, it was readdressed Sunday. So y'all are, y'all are really holding it down for the women. Goodness gracious, and you're beating the men up. But uh, uh, we are beating oh, the men up. <laughs> but, but, but listen, listen, listen. The conversation is interesting, and, and the doctor that just spoke, she, she kind of cleared it up real, real, real simple. At the end of the day, you know, when you look at relationships, um, you know, age is no more a number. I mean, kids nope. are growing up so fast, mm-hmm. you know, and at the same time, uh, you know, uh, I think you made a comment about older women taking care of themselves. Amen. So, you know, uh, number one, I, 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 the brother was talking. He he was beating men up. Goodness gracious, brother. I, I'm going to pray for you right now. <laughs> you need to come Me? to church on Sunday, man. Yeah, you was beating us up. Oh, he but, goes to church you know, every because, Sunday. Because, <laughs> Three listen, churches. Because, listen. <laughs> Young men, a lot of young men don't have father figures in their lives. So they really don't know uh, what relationships look like. And the doctor cleared it up. She said it's a, it's, a, it's a consensual, sometimes it's a consensual situation. But at the, at the end of the day, you know, uh, young people, you know, they, 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 they do get with, with women and they abuse them. They, they take advantage of them. But at the end of the day, you, you can't put a number, uh, w- w- you know, when you see a younger guy or a uh, uh, a younger woman mm-hmm. even with an older man. Yes. So, you know, so it, it goes both ways. It's not just about a younger man with an older woman. It's also younger women with older men. Yes. Right. But the bottom line is, you know, um, I-, I just think that you can't put numbers on, you know, relationships. And, you know, and you talk about sugar mamas and sugar daddies. I mean, that's, that's, that's heavy, but... You know, but just keep in mind that when, when, when we talk about all these things, that young people, uh, they don't have role models. So, you know, sometimes, yes, they, they do get with, with in relationships and they look for that mother figure or that father figure, but I don't think that that title should be given to that kind of situation. It, you know, it's all about growth. You know, when you get in relationships and you befriend somebody and it becomes intimate, uh, it's, it's all about growth. It, it should never, never be... A, a, a title where it's a sugar mama. Now, I've, 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 I've messed with older women, and a lot of older women that's been in my life, they've always given me jewels to help me grow. And mm-hmm. it's never been a sugar mama mm-hmm. situation. And I know some women that mess with older guys. And when I see them now, you know, their lives are intact, you know, because you know, it's all about, you know, helping people to grow. So let's, let's try to uh, not beat up everybody, not beat up the, the, the men so much when you see them with, with older women. 
you know what I mean, or, or, the, or the young one. We, we just got to look at uh, what they're getting out of the relationship. If, if they're getting some tools that will help them uh, further their life, you know, then you can't get mad. You just got to, you know, pray for them and, and just hope that things work out. All you right. You know what I mean? Thank so you so listen, much, Adrian. You guys have a great day. <laughs> you too. Bye-bye. Right, you too. You know, wow. tools and jewels. <laughs> right. Tools and jewels. <laughs> tools and jewels. <laughs> sugar mamas, sugar papas. I'm sorry, Adrian. <laughs> it is what it is. It I is what it is. Yeah. Okay, Kevin. You know, so yeah, I am i don't see myself beating up on males. Right. You know what I'm saying? I, I, I'm hoping he's, you know, listening to the same radio show. 